Okay, this is probably one of the first talking videos I've done in a long time, but I just felt that I had to do it because this really <laughs> drove me up a wall. Uh, this article from the HuffPo called Nintendo Strong Females Are Everything That's Wrong With Video Games written by Alexis G G a Clemen or whatever, you know, in before the Jews get here, right? Uh, um, but basically, the point that I'm uh, talking about in the video, I mean, if, if you look at the article, uh, long story short, it's just her saying, oh, Nintendo was doing this Women's History Month, and, you know, look at all of these characters, and blah, blah, blah. And the first thing that you're going to see is this part right here, you know. Here's the full list of female characters that Nintendo intends on celebrating for Women's History Month. Uh, Tetra from Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker HD, Toadette from the Mario series, Bayonet from Bayonetta, Rosalina from the Mario series, Lucina from Fire Emblem, Samus from Metroid, Bombette from Paper Mario. Have you heard of most of these characters? Didn't think so. So right there, you know, uh... Everyone who's reading this is just going to be enraged at, oh, what do you mean, didn't think so? These are like the most, you know, these are some of the most iconic video game characters out there. You know, you, Mrs. Uh, Alexia, or whatever, uh, um, um, Alexis, you clearly don't play video games. And, you know, I imagine a bulk of the arguments that are going to be in the comments section is that. But I want to point everyone to a something else in this uh, article. In the article, she links uh, right underneath the whole check out this clip of Bayonetta, from which I've never played Bayonetta. Uh, I probably will recently because I finally got a Wii U. But uh, underneath this GIF, it says, Studies have shown that sexualized portrayals of women in video games negatively influence people's perceptions on women in life. And I'm just like... What? It's like, what the fuck? Are you kidding me? So, you know, I click the link. I read the uh, the article. And what the article says is actually very different from uh, what Miss Al uh, Alexis is telling you. And to me, I'm thinking, like, like they just probably put this in there, you know, because they want to peddle all their, like, pseudo-academia bullshit about how video games cause misogyny and blah 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 and they just kind of shoehorn this in there just underneath everything else because i guess people would i guess i guess most people would ignore it if you if you did it like this if the whole article was just talking about this uh this academic article i think uh the comments would be very different but because this is just kind of shoehorned in here where the rest of the article is just talking about how these characters and Miss Mel characters, and it's really just parroting all of Aeneas Sarkeesian's bullshit and just repeating it for like the bulk of this article, I think it gets ignored. But I'm not going to ignore it, and we're going to talk about it now. So, let's go to the article. The effects of the sexualization of female video game characters on gender stereotyping and female, con uh, female self-concept. Uh, by Elizabeth Bemham Morowitz, uh, Dana Matstra. Now, I'm not going to read the entire thing because it's quite long. I'm going to go to the important parts that I feel about this. Number one, let's read the abstract. The present study utilized in an experimental design to investigate the short-term effects of exposure to sexualized female video game characters on gender stereotyping and female self-concept in emerging adults. Uh, social cognitive theory of gender development and differentiation was used to exploit this relationship. Undergraduate students at a large U.S. Southwestern University participated in the study. I think it was uh, 328 students. Um, students were randomly assigned to play a sexualized heroine, a non-sexualized heroine, or no video game at all then completed a online questionnaire. Female uh, self-efficiency was negatively affected by gameplay with the sexualized female character. 
Results uh, um, results uh, uh, cautiously suggest that playing a sexualized video game heroine unfavorably influenced people's beliefs about women in the real world. So right there, you see, it says, results cautiously suggest. Cautiously suggests sounds a lot different than um, what she said here, where it says that studies have shown that sexualized portrayals of women in video games negatively influence people. This is saying it as a fact. This negatively influences people. But the article itself is saying that it cautiously suggests that it would negatively influence people's beliefs about women in the real world. So right off the bat, you know, we're on some bullshit. So let's go to the actual uh, test. What was the test? How was the test administered? Uh, all right, so number one. Okay, the study in layman terms is they're getting a video game and they're having their uh, test group play the video game. And um, after they play the video game in certain situations and parameters, the students are asked a list of questions from a questionnaire. And based on how they answer the questions, we'll determine how they get their data. Now, they came to the conclusion that they're just going to use Tomb Raider Legend for the sexualized and the non-sexualized female conditions. And they backed this up by saying, well, the game was very popular, it made a lot of money, Laura Croft's a very popular character, blah, 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 blah. So right now they're talking about how, you know, we can just use one fucking game and this is cool. This is a, this game will completely uh, fulfill the requirements we need for our experiment. Just remember that for later. Now, um, basically what they're doing is they're having you play the game and while you're playing the levels, you'll be playing with two different characters. I mean, I mean, uh, I mean not two different characters, I'm sorry. Two different costumes. Obviously, you know, you're playing a, a Tomb Raider game, you're going to be playing as Laura Croft. Uh, in one costume, you see here, she's very modestly dressed, you know, not really showing a lot of skin. And then in the second outfit, she's showing a lot of skin. She's in this tight little dress, yeah, you can see her tits, her ass is leaking out of the sides of the dress, you know. There you go. And they're basically going to have the kids, well not kids, you know, the college students, play the game, uh... Some people will be playing it with the sexualized dress, some people will be playing it with the non-sexualized dress, and some people won't be playing the game at all. So the quote that links you to the study says, Studies have shown that sexualized portrayals of women in video games negatively influence people's perception of women in life. But the study says, Playing video games may not always result in lower self-esteem in female players, although it was reasoned that playing a non-sexualized female video game player may result in greater self-esteem in female player uh, in comparison to playing a sexualized female character. The present findings didn't bear this out. As means in Table 1 reveal, there is very little difference across the conditions. In other words, this study does not provide support for that idea. For a woman playing a non-sexualized character, or even a same-sex character of either sexualized uh, or non-sexualized na uh, nature, positively or negatively affects the level of self-esteem. So, the study is saying that it does not ex really affect your self-esteem either way, positively or negatively. But it's saying that it negatively influences people's perceptions of women. So, we can safely say that the sexualized portrayals of women in video games are not negatively influencing women's perceptions of themselves in real life and it's not causing it for the men either research question one probe the relationship between gender condition and gender stereotyping it emerged 
that the gaming condition had no significant effect on male players' gender stereotyping. One explanation for the lack of significant results for tests of the interaction between gender and video game condition may come from the features of the game itself. It is possible that the stereotypical appearance of the sexualized character may not have a negative effect, I mean, a, a, a negative influence on men's attitudes towards women in comparison to playing non sexualized characters or no video game at all, due to other traits of the character, which are arguably positive, counter stereotypical. This suggests that powerful female video game characters may have a positive influence on male players. In that regardless of sexualization, they are much stronger and more powerful representations of women than is typical of many other popular media products. Exposure to such powerful images may decrease the tendency to gender stereotype based on appearance. So long story, uh, you know, the long story short, strong female characters, regardless of whether or not they're overly sexualized or not, can um, cause men to uh, decrease their tendency to gender stereotype based on appearance. So when we read things like this, and then we go back to what she's saying about the article, which is studies have shown that sexualized portrayals of women in video games negatively influence people's perception of women in real life. They conveniently leave out the part of the study where they say the exact opposite. That even these uh, characters and Bayonetta would fall under the same umbrella as Tomb Raider, which is a strong female character who is extremely overly sexualized, but has many strong character attributes. It can lead to men having a decrease in their tendencies to gender stereotypes. So... Why isn't this in her article? Now, the last bit mm. of this article is this, you know, this is a bit of fun. Um, limitations and future research. One limitation of this study is the use of only one video game in the experiment. <laughs> Fucking really? Uh, no. No. This is bullshit. If this study had got them all of the results they wanted, which was that sexual uh, that oversexualized female characters would cause women to have uh, low self esteem and low self efficiency, they would have wrapped it up, called it a day, and said, "Yep, you know, we we have the facts we need. This is it. We're done. Study over." But instead, they got some unfavorable results in reference to the males who were in this study. And when it came to the females, there was no change, negative or positive whatsoever, in reference to their self-esteem. But they said that there was some, you know, th there was an effect as far as females' capabilities. And that when they see sexy Tomb Raider running around doing all this acrobatic kung fu shit and shooting people, that they have lower... Uh, self-efficiency about their capabilities which to me just sounds like you know when I am watching Unbok 2 and I see these men doing all kinds of kung fu shit that I know I will never be able to do in my life no matter how hard I work at the gym and then I hear about how Tony Ja does his own stunts and that there were no wires in this movie, that could possibly lower my self-efficiency and my capabilities. But, you know, I get over it. You know, if I wanted to, you know, be Tony Ja that bad, maybe I would devote my life to uh, his, I think it's uh, Muay Thai, I think it's what he does. You know, I would devote the rest of my life to Muay Thai, but, you know, I'm already 24, so it might be too late, I don't know. But, you know, it, this is ridiculous. They go on about how, you know, well, maybe we should have used more than one game. Maybe we should have used uh, more than one character. Maybe we should have had different genres, like, you know, shooting games or racing games, RPGs, 
uh, you know, maybe we should have did things different. Uh, maybe if other people start um, taking what we got and extra, you know, ex they expand on this test, maybe we might get the results that we crave. So they take a snippet of the paper, which says that after the results and you know they played the game, we gave them the questions. We found that women, um, you know, they were like, uh, you know, my self efficiently, uh, my self efficiency levels are down. I don't really know if I can, you know, succeed in the real world. Which once again, it's saying, oh, I don't think I, I can succeed in the real world. It's kind of vague, isn't it? Like. If they see Bayonetta or, in, you know, in the studies case, Tomb Raider, doing stuff that they can't do physically, how would that result in them feeling that they cannot succeed in the real world? Like, what does that mean? I don't think I can graduate college. I don't think that I'll move out of my parents' basement. I don't think I'll ever find a man. I, I, I'll never have kids. I'll never be happy. I'll, I'll never be whole. What does that mean? you can't succeed in real life. And also, I don't really see how that has anything to do with what our um, Mrs., uh, whatever the fuck her name is, uh, Alexis Klemberger is saying when she's saying that it negatively influences people's perception of women in real life. Which, like I said before, is a lie because they're saying that well, it's not, it's not it's not a complete lie because they're saying that it may do this in reference to the men not gender stereotyping. So on one hand, you can say, well, that, you know, if men see uh, female characters who have positive character traits, they may uh, not gender stereotype her even if she's, you know, running around with barely any clothes on. But... You know, that swings both ways. So they'll say, well, they may not, but they might do it too. And that's the part that they go with. And this is why these studies are bullshit, because none of the results found in the study are concrete. It's just maybe this, maybe that, and they go with the maybes that they want, and that's what they're going to tell you. And that's what they're going to put on the Huffington Post. They're not going to tell you, uh, but actually, no, it's just in the Huffington Post, there is no maybe. It just says that they negatively, in, uh, they, uh, negatively influence people's perceptions of women in life, where in the actual study, there isn't really anything that concrete that says this does this beyond a shadow of a doubt. I mean, hell, the fucking abstract of the goddamn article says that... It, what was it? It was so fucking funny if I ever read this. It says that it suggests it. It cautiously suggests that playing a sexualized video game heroine unfavorably influenced people's beliefs about women in the real world. So, yeah, I smell a lot of bullshit. Uh, if you want to read this whole fucking thing, uh, go ahead. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, I would archive it, but I don't really think Archive Today works for academic papers, so you're going to have to give her that click. I'm sorry.